Blessed be the name of Jesus. Romans 14.1. Thanks for joining me. As for the one who is weak in faith. You know, none of us started from a position, a position of strength. No, none, none of us. In fact, if you look at the Christian experience, it seems like a yo-yo. It seems that they were going up their times when, as a teenager, for example, remember, you know, there are times when you feel, wow, I'm doing well, I'm strong. And then there are times you go way down and you hit rock bottom. Rock bottom. And it can happen within weeks or something within days. You know, rock bottom. But you continue to hold on and God brings it. We continue to go to do what he says. In the word, prayer, being in church, especially being in church, being in the house of God. And you will find eventually, you know, where it was high ups and, and deep lows, they begin to kind of peter out and, and it becomes less of a, a wave of, of a high and a low and you begin to mature, you become stable. You become stable and steady as a believer. So welcome him. And then he says, but not to quarrel over opinions. Not to quarrel over opinions. Now, this is something that is very, very important for us today. The Bible is the word of God. We believe that. That is our authority in life. Not what man says, not what this bishop says or this theologian says or what this prime minister or president or NBA player or Hollywood star or any fly-by-night preacher, what they say. No, 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 no. The word of God, God's word, the scripture, the holy Bible. That is the authority in our lives. So it's not what I say, what I believe, and what my opinion is. The Bible is quite clear. It's very explicit on certain mat on many matters. Not on everything, but on many matters. How many genders there are? Well, the Bible tells us God created them male and female. What about sexuality? God says between man and woman. What about marriage? It is honorable in the eyes of God. How many ways are there to God? One way, Jesus. Is there a heaven and hell? Yes, there is. The Bible is pretty clear, pretty explicit on what it says. Now, if someone doesn't want to believe the Bible, they're going to find ways and means to kind of misconstrue, to, to read into certain scriptures and, 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 and misinterpret scripture. Leave them on their own, beloved. You read the word and interpret the scripture correctly ask god to help you and he will lead you and guide you and help you and come under a good teaching ministry so you've got the explicit truths and facts of the bible states but then there are other things which is not clear on and then many times we start talking about our opinions now the question is whose opinion is better well we can look to those who have a more grounded position in the faith and and we can give credence to and 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 value to that sort of opinion because it's an opinion that is um fed by facts and knowledge and, and undergirded by a strong foundation of doctrine and faith and experience in the lord jesus christ but we cannot weigh an opinion give an opinion the same value and wait a scripture. So let us not get in, 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 in quarrels and debates and deep discussions and divisions over opinions. Do not quarrel over opinions. So we need to set the, we need to, when something comes up, we need to determine what does the Bible say? And if the Bible is not clear, is this just an opinion? How do I um, work with this? So we need wisdom. We need wisdom. We need the Holy Spirit to help us. But we must also have a, an approach to things like this. Do not quarrel over opinions. But what the Bible says, that is clear. And we'll continue talking about what Paul is dealing with here in Romans 14. God bless you. Have an awesome day.